All right, girls. Let's go. It's time to go to school. Okay, everything. Got yeah. your backpacks. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Oh, you got it. You got it. Sure you got everything. So a question I often get asked is, is why Rome? Isn't that one of the most religious cities in the world? Uh, you got the Vatican there, you have the Pope there. Uh, it's, it's one of the most Christian places in the world. So what's the, what's the point of having someone there planting churches and, and sharing the gospel if it's already there? That's a, a product of a huge misunderstanding about Roman Catholicism. Rome as a city is full of religion but it's void of the gospel. You walk around and every corner there's signs of this desire to do something for God. Whether you go to see the holy steps, people climbing on their knees, they're climbing and, and doing something to draw closer to God, but God is this far off figure who's at the top of these stairs, figuratively speaking, and you're trying to get to Him and showing Him how contrite your heart is. But the gospel is the total opposite. It's God who came down to us to grab us and say, there's nothing that you can do. Uh, I've done it for you through, through Jesus Christ. So it's, it's Christ who steps in your place and, and takes those sins from you. And so what we see at the heart of Roman Catholicism is a false gospel. Rome becomes then one of the darkest places in the world. You definitely realize the vastness of lostness here. Kyra and I were married in December of 2006. We moved up to Louisville to attend Southern Seminary. And it was there that we sensed uh, the Lord calling us to serve abroad. The Lord made it very clear that uh, Rome was a place we were to serve. So we lived in Louisville for two years until the summer of 2009 when we moved uh, abroad to Rome. A few months after we arrived, we learned about a new church plant in Rome called Breccia di Roma. And I met the pastor and we began attending I serve at the church alongside Leonardo as associate pastor. The Lord provided for us to be able to buy our own building. And that was an extremely exciting and even uh, significant day because it was the first time since 1925 that in the city center of Rome, an evangelical church or institution had bought a piece of property. It's in the heart of the city. It's literally a stone's throw from the Colosseum. It's a short drive to the Vatican City. It's surrounded by Catholic seminaries that are very influential worldwide. So it's a small place, but uh, at the same time, there are huge steps forward for the presence of the gospel on the culture and the people who live there. The first time that we met, uh, I was impressed by Reed and Kyra by asking them, what's your dream? What's your desire? Are you ready to die here? And uh, Reed and Kyra told me, yes, we're ready to die here. This is our home. They had just arrived and they knew that their calling was a long-term calling of God and they certainly had counted the cost. We're talking about doing ministry in a context that has been shaped by one institution for 2,000 plus years. And you don't just come in and, and knock that down, even probably in one lifetime. It takes a long commitment, it takes years takes a lifetime. We had been living in Rome for just about six years together when we came up on our second uh, furlough. So we went back to the States for two months and we were just about ready to come back to Rome as we typically do before we head back. We wanted to get together with our family, have dinner and, and, uh, and just enjoy each other's company before heading back. And so. We were driving northbound on a, on a highway, heading back home, and uh, not, not really saying much, just kind of reflective, I think. And at one point, I kind of noticed out of my peripheral vision that there was something that just kind of seemed a little bit off. There was a, a big 18-wheeler that was entering into the road perpendicularly to, to our vehicle. And just in a matter of a split second, it hit us in the side and T-boned us. And 
uh, rolled us over and pushed us across the uh, northbound lanes of, of this highway and then through the median and then across the southbound lane as well until we hit a, hit a guardrail. And on the, on the impact, uh, Kyra passed away immediately. The hardest moment for sure was the day me and the girls walked into our apartment, you know, for the first time without Kyra. And, you know, there's just this reality that you could just feel the absence. I do remember that first time sitting down and trying to prepare myself mentally for, for prayer and talking to God. And, and it was just a really big, you know, kind of as a test of your faith. There was definitely kind of these real moments of, I don't even know what to say. I don't know uh, what to do or how to even pray. I think it was after the funeral that I really had time to really sit down and consider you know, what does the future look like for us? We were driving from the airport to Atlanta, and I whispered to Reed, Reed, the Lord needs you here in Rome, and I, I strongly encourage you to consider uh, coming back and to continue to serve the cause of the gospel in the city. I really didn't even allow myself that uh, possibility, just knowing what it would take. Although, there was a, a desire uh, to think about going back to Rome. It just didn't even seem feasible or possible. Like, how am I going to come back and raise three little girls? At the time, they were six, four, and two. Um, and then being a single dad who's, you know, got a job and responsibilities to do, and knowing that there I don't, I don't have family around to help. Thinking about going back to Rome seemed insurmountable really as a, as a possibility. I thought about my neighbors, I thought about our friends, thinking about people like Luke and Elena, who are good people but they didn't know Christ. The Lord just totally changed my perspective on things, being reminded of the tremendous lostness here. And just knowing the need for a gospel reformation here that may or may not come in my lifetime, but I'm wanting to be a part of that and wanting to contribute in some way. The Lord made it very clear that uh, going back to Rome was what the Lord was calling me and the girls to do. But that doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. It's going to be difficult, but if the Lord's calling me to do this, I knew that He'll provide and He'll make it possible. Reed's decision to come back to Rome has affected the church tremendously. And not only for the church, but also for his friends and non-believing neighbors. When he Met, met us after the, the, uh, the accident. He was there with a smile. And it was so shocking for me. There is no way to understand that if you haven't faith, because it's impossible. The fact that a young man would come back in such conditions was a clear example of the way in which the grace of God works in people's lives. When I, I met the, the, <laughs> the Carr family, I didn't believe. And uh, for me, the, the important was my life and myself. Little by little, I, I started to think about my, my life. From that time, Everything changed. We have seen conversions uh, happening after Reed's decision to come back because it was such a powerful testimony of the gospel working in people's lives. 
Today, uh, our life uh, is totally changed. God uh, is, uh, is in every moment of, of our life. Without uh, uh, Kyra and Reed, we, we would never change our, our life. If Kyra saw what ministry was like for us today, of course her heart would overflow with joy to see Elena and Luca uh, coming to church, being baptized, um, living their lives for God and the Lord. She would certainly um, rejoice in the fruit that's come since her passing. You know, if you had told me what was going to happen, you know, look, you're going to go home on furlough, you're about to, going to be just about to come back, but then Kyra's going to be killed in a freak accident. And then you're going to take the girls back uh, yourself and raise them and do I mean, it was laughed at you and said, that's absolutely ridiculous and crazy. It's not possible. Doing ministry and taking care of the girls and being a dad and, and people ask me, you know, what, how do you do it? I was like, I don't know. This is the Lord, you know, it's just, it gives an opportunity to brag on the Lord and say, you know, he's just so gracious. He gives us the grace we need. One lesson that I believe the Lord's taught me more than any other is that His grace is sufficient. No matter the challenge that He places before you, no matter um, what scenario He puts you in, uh, you can think it's completely impossible. But if he, if he allows it and He puts you in it, then He's going to provide for you. And even when we think things are impossible, God's grace is sufficient.